Hey gang, Bronco Carl 92 here. So the upcoming video I have is a partial teardown of a 1964 small case cruisomatic transmission from a Ford Country sedan. Uh, it's a station wagon. Um, my second camera, the uh, SD card, decided to um, become corrupt, and I basically lost the rest of the teardown footage uh, past the midpoint. Um, and after that, I was actually kind of disappointed and. I didn't really feel like filming putting it back together because the missing uh, piece in the middle. Um, I looked through the, uh, the footage that I have and uh, the transmission is old and it's interesting. Um, so I did post this. Um, I trimmed the 50 minutes of footage I have uh, down to about a half an hour. Um, so if you want to sit through it to see a halfway teardown of a cruise matic go for it. Um, if not, uh, I guess turn off here. So... Anyhow, uh, as always, thanks for watching, and uh, here we go. My, my, my. So what do we have here? Well, it's here. As I bust its wrapper open. Hold on one second. Yes, of course, it's transmission. That, my friends, is a Cruise-O-Matic from a 1964 Ford Country Sedan. And I gotta fix it. Okay, so I was approached by someone at work. He asked me if I knew anything about transmissions. I said, ah, a little bit. He said, what about old transmissions? I said, ah, a little bit. So, uh, we're gonna take a look at this Cruise-O-Matic here. Uh, the problem with it is, um, he bought the car. Um, he drove it for a little bit, a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months. Um, started to leak. Port stop leak in it. Um, it continues to leak, and of course now he lost third gear. So, um, as we all know, stop leak is uh, kind of uh, not a good thing to put into a transmission. So we're going to have to rip it down and uh, see what's going on. So uh, first thing I need to do is power wash off the 51 years of muck and grime on there. And then uh, I'll get you put back on after it's cleaned off, and uh, we'll see what we can do with it. Well, in the middle of all the fun we were having cleaning that thing off, my power washer's uh, pump decided to fail. Looks like a bolt broke and the housing all came apart, so I guess I'm going to have to fix that for now. And uh, continue power washing. Hopefully I'll get this thing back together in a little bit. Well, surprise, surprise. There actually was a transmission underneath all that grease and muck. Yep. So we have an aluminum bell housing, a cast iron main case, and an aluminum extension housing. That's an uh, indicator that this is a cruise-o-matic or a Ford-o-matic transmission. Um, I'm going to show you how to identify um, which model it is. Uh, in the okay, same. so from what I've read, we have a small case, medium case, and large case, ford matic and then there's the FMX. And the way you determine that is you got to measure the case length from here to here. And if you notice, there's a little there's a little spacer right here. You're not supposed to include the spacer in the measurement. So if we take this measurement here, we look, we've got 9 and 7 8 inches, which makes this a small case ford matic or cruise matic um, I'm going to be taking this transmission apart and uh, basically just completely resealing it, um, fitting new clutches in it, and uh, that really should be it. I don't know um, what else I'll be able to get in the line of parts for it. Um, 
aside from clutches and seals. I don't think it needs any hard parts. Um, the fluid was actually quite clean. Um, like I said, it just won't shift into third gear anymore and it's got some leaks. So we'll get it apart and we'll show you what's going on. Well, I think I know where the oil leak is. That's the, the vacuum modulator over here. And there's fluid coming out of there. I'd say the diaphragm is probably broken. And that's probably where his oil leak problem and, uh, and the shifting problem is coming from. So, anyhow, I'm going to rip this thing probably apart tomorrow and uh, we'll put you back on then. All right, the cruise matic teardown. I've got the pan off already, obviously. Uh, so, first thing to do is remove the filter. And then it wants you to remove the pressure regulator springs here. Automatic transmission technology has come a long way since 1950, whatever this thing was built in. Okay, it says to loosen, but do not remove the pressure regulator attaching bolts. I believe that would be these. Pressure regulator assembly. Remove these pipes. Okay, next it wants us to. Loosen up the band adjustment screws. So there's the one for the front band. And the one for the rear band is over here. Way smaller than I thought. Okay, so they said five complete turns. So.
Okay, next, control valve assembly, which I believe would be a valve body. Bolts are all the same length, and so are these, they're shorter. and strut under here. And it looks like it's tapered. This goes towards the outside. This thin end goes to the band. So this baby. So the rear servo. It's kind of weird. The one bolt uh, looks like a grade 8 designation and the other one looks like it came out of a hardware store. But that's probably normal. There's like an anchor pin on the end of it. And of course another strut. This one the notch goes into the rear band. the feed tube for the rear pump. It's not threaded, it just uh, was kind of stuck, it has an o-ring on it. pin for the modulator. Don't want to lose that. Use the adjustment anchor for the rear band. Oh, 
when uh, my friend was getting the parts for this, he said they don't make the bands for these things and they have to be relined. I can see why, because they're actually a cast iron type. I think the material on them is okay. Let's see who they are once they get out. I think the next thing to do is to take this front bump off and uh, readjust the camera. All right, I'm gonna get the front pump off. And just make sure you have a nice rag or something. Absorbent pad to catch all the extra oil that's gonna right. ooze out of this baby. Clean up the oil. So the pump just pulls off. Set that aside. And it wants you to remove the extension housing. This is where the little bracket that they show you would be very handy for holding this thing in place. So I don't have that. So oops, sorry about that. Yummy, more oil. I'm gonna throw this in the parts washer. All right, so we gotta take a snap ring off of the speedo gear. I think it's made to do that. It says to work the gear off, and then there should be a ball. our ball. Make 
Here's the bowl. Don't want to damage this gear. The ball goes right into that groove there. That gear's kind of worn. Oh well. <laughs> there we go. Just slides off as a unit. We got three seals here, all in good shape. And another snap ring for the governor. I just had a thought. Carefully remove these seals, even though they're going to be replaced. I don't like breaking this stuff until I know I have new ones. I think we gotta lose the gloves for this part.
these are a pain in the ass. That was a pain, but they're off. And the governor has, looks like a little ball here also that holds it in place. You'll get a mallet. Get a little love tap. There's the bowl. Hmm. Not really guard up. I don't understand why it was so resistant to come off other than the fact that it's been on there for 51 years. Or more, maybe. Okay, now this is the rear pump discharge tube. And there's a tool to remove it, which I don't have. I'm gonna have to figure something out. Let's see. Voila, that worked. Snap ring pliers. Man, I think if we turn this this way. be able to pry the pump out and spill more oil. Wonderful. All right, so we got the rear pump and the output shaft in one shot. Parts washer. Sounds like the rear sprag came apart, and it did. That's all right. Band looks awesome. Now I am 
imagine that bolt that goes to the outside holds the center support in. I think maybe I might want to wash the rest of this out. Okay, now that you saw back. that, um, I can tell you uh, what I did find uh, with the transmission. Um, the uh, direct clutch was completely worn out. Um, the forward clutch um, was flaking, um, not burnt, but flaking. Um, the sprag um, was worn out. The uh, springs were all worn and they wouldn't stay in place. So we replaced it for, with a piece from a Turbo 400. It uh, turns out to be the same part. And the return spring on the, uh, I believe it was the forward clutch, um, it's a Belleville type spring. Um, or it might have been a direct, I don't remember at this point. Um, uh, it was cracked. Um, otherwise, um, the bands were in good shape, um, which was nice because it would have cost a lot of money and uh, a bit of time to uh, have them relined. Um, so anyway, as always, thanks again for watching Bronco Carl 92, and uh, we'll see you again soon. Take care.